Welcome back to round two. We are on the draw again and we have a great hand again. So no mulligan. And we can basically start with Gruel Guildgate and then we have all the options uh, between Zerta Druid and Spike Jester. With the Zerta Druid being quite interesting to ramp into Ravelt Maka followed by Zerta Swine. But if the experiment one evolves here, then we might just want the Spike Jester to block as soon as possible. Not racing uh, the start our opponent is putting up here, so definitely want to have a blocker. And even though the Brush Strider has an additional point of power, I think we want to block Experiment 1 most likely. Okay, that's, that's a nice follow-up because it means... Um, Oh well, uh, well it's it's nice because it is it's a defender. It's not so nice because it means that the experiment one can now regenerate and kill the spike jester in combat. Um, the question is if we are willing to get two for one by experiment one and this uh, the curve our opponent has shown has shown us here. I think we are. Uh, we don't want to take too much damage against the higher torturer. And we have a, a great hand. We should be favored if the game goes longer. Uh, we could we could just play the Zerta Druid um, as a way to just block the Brush Strider, but also accelerate out the Zerta Swine next turn if the Druid survives. I'm once again going to try to prevent as much damage as possible here. I think it's that's one of the easiest ways for us to lose, uh, just getting burned out by by higher torture. And overall, we should have a very good late game, even though we. Um, I don't want. I don't even want to say threw away the spike jester. I think we got some very reasonable value out of the spike jester here. Okay, our opponent might have something to play here with that health fountain, maybe a white card. It's, it always amazes me how you can draft aggressive decks with so many colors, but it's also possible that our opponent just had happened to had uh, one of his more aggressive starts. Zerta Swine is great. Um, the only disadvantage is that it it's kind of it kind of trades with Frostburn Weird. So we might have to see if we can do something about that. But now his experiment one should be held off very effectively. Uh, we just have to hope that he doesn't have too many high impact spells left. If he offers the trade between Frostburn Weird and Rubble Butt Marker, I'm definitely taking it, taking the trade. But there is a Fortress Cyclops, so that triggers experiment one, which is okay. And it's going to attack as a 6-3, which means that Rubble Belt Marker is probably uh, going to be blocking there. We still have a Scorch Walker. And Fortress Cyclops blocks Zerta Swine very efficiently. So we probably want to have all of this on defense. And then use the... Uh, wait, wait on the Scorch Walker until we have more information. Also not going to unleash the Splatter Thug. It's, a good, it's just a good blocker. Okay, our opponent draws into some more guild gates. If he has a gatekeeper, we are probably going to see it now. But he could also be out of gas. Now he has a Karasta Gorgon, oh my god. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Now he can just start, uh, start taking down our team. With the help of his 4-4 experiment one. That's definitely not good. Also, we didn't draw anything to deal with the Gorgon. I'm I'm not going to play the Scorch Walker now that he has a Gorgon in play, but we also have no reasonable attacks here. Now I'm afraid that he's just going to machine gun down our our whole board. Also interesting that he isn't even attacking. Probably because he doesn't have to, but still um would have expected him to just go for it there. So we have seven mana and our opponent is on 18 uh, with that gutter snipe. Now the only creature that survives um, armed dangerous is Zerta Swine, given that our opponent can just minus three, minus three, anything else. 
So what we could do would be to give this plus one plus one a double strike and it must be blocked. But I don't think we are getting anywhere with that. Um, the problem is the longer this game goes, the worse things become uh, because of experiment one. So let's see. If we give uh, Zertas one plus one plus one and double strike, it would attack for quite a bit of damage. We could just we could just give this double strike and see what happens. We probably get um, at least one creature out of our opponent, and if he isn't careful, then we can Scorch Walker. Yeah, I kind of like that. I mean, it's not it's not a super play or anything, but. I like it better than just uh, sitting around doing nothing. And if our opponent uses up Plus one plus one counters, that's also a good deal for us. Um, if he blocks with any of his creatures, we kill it. And if he becomes a, even a bit greedy, um, thinking that he can just block with multiple creatures and get the swine as well, then we blood rush and he probably won't have enough plus one plus one counters available to him. He only has three uh, to really punish us. So I think that's a reasonable attack here. And it looks like our opponent is just chump blocking with Frostburn Weird, which is fine. Like I said, this wasn't uh, wasn't amazing or anything, but we do get a creature out of the deal. Okay, opponent wants to know what's in our hand. It's a Scorch Walker. My hope is that our opponent somehow takes this game more slowly, more defensively than he needs to, and gives us the time needed to stabilize somehow and to put an offense at the same time. I know it's it's really difficult, and I I don't get at all why our opponent is playing so defensively, but it's great for us, so I'm not, I'm not going to complain. Um, I think our opponent had two turns already where he could have attacked but didn't. And now Zerta Swine is still just as good as before uh, in a certain way, in a certain sense. Uh, it's possible that we should have waited with the Armed Dangerous. Um, opponent just jump blocking doesn't mean that we might have wasted an opportunity there. Um, we could have just tried to fuse this on Zerta Swine and then at least gotten in for a couple of points of damage and so on. Now, our opponent knows about the Scorch Walker. We can Scorch Walker onto Splatterthug, but then it gets killed in response. We so That means we can only profitably um, Blood Rush onto Zerta Swine, and Zerta Swine gets blocked very efficiently by Fortress Cyclops, and maybe also just by multiple creatures. Now, I still think it's reasonable to attack here. Like I said, I, I don't see us winning uh, from this position. So I have to hope that our opponent makes some questionable plays and that we can somehow get the threatening combo off the table. Our opponent is also uh, potentially just playing scared and uh, might be playing around cards that we don't even have and so on. It looks like he's even offering up his Gorgon here. Of course it's possible that he has uh, some card to punish us here, but if we trade our Zotar Swine and Scorch Walker for his Gorgon, 
I'm very happy about this uh, about this turn of events. Um, clearly, he still gets to kill Gutter Snipe or Splatterthug, but then at least we have the potential to draw out of this uh, situation, as opposed to him just dominating every combat step with the Gorgon. And it looks like he rather keeps he'd rather keep Experiment One than to kill uh, one of our creatures. Which is interesting, because every creature he draws is going to evolve a small experiment one, but a 3-3 experiment one is less likely to evolve. Okay, so... Looks like we get another nice block uh, done here. Oh wait, um, the Maka can block this, and then we can double block this. So, if our opponent doesn't have anything here, we we get another great trade. Of course, if we we can't really um, play around anything, so I'm just hoping things work out. We are also facing another three cards, so it might all be in vain, but just the fact that we have somehow stabilized this board uh, makes me quite happy. And then Trostani Summoner comes down, so we are probably just toast. Yeah, that's uh, how things go sometimes. Um, a five color, five color deck, basically. Um, that curved out basically optimally and then had the guild gates and the hallowed fountain to cast everything topping it off with Karasda Gorgon and Tarastani Summoner uh, just a little bit too much uh, for for us here now we can't do much against Tristani Summoner except for just racing it but we do have an illness in the ranks that we could just bring in um, it's not amazing, but it's not out of the question. The problem is our opponent hasn't really shown a lot of other tokens, so I think it's more likely to hope that we can burn our opponent out or um, Alpha Strike for the win with the help of Decoy or... Where is it? Um, or Dangerous. We could also bring in... Uh, where is it? Clearer Path against the Higher Torturer, but once again, I don't think the Higher Torturer is the card that we should worry about here. Oh, I, I really like how our main deck is set up. We could take out Weapon Surge, but our opponent has shown to make some uh, questionable plays, questionable blocks even, so I kind of like having the most tricks possible against him. And we are going to be playing first with a hand that's not very good. Um, we have one of our late game cards here. It's not, it's not even uh, movable. Um, we are missing green for Croconora, Ground Assault, and Putrefy. Armed Dangerous doesn't do anything till the later stages. And Explosive Impact is good, but does cost six. So this hand, I think, is a, car a hand that we have to mulligan. We we are playing, I believe, um, seven. I think it's seven green sources, which isn't too few, but we also don't really have a chance with this hand to raise any kind of his Trostani's draws, and he could still overrun us with his quick draws, so sadly we are going to mulligan because of our mana. Now we have a hand that's not really good, but the mana is perfect, and we do have a Zerta Swine that can go a long way, so I'm not going to mulligan to five. I also think that uh, going to five on the play with uh, any deck, but also with our mana hungry deck, is just asking for trouble. Looks like we might just curve out into Scorch Walker, followed by Zerta Swine, uh, which I wouldn't complain about in the slightest. So, as long as we hit another land drop, everything is going to be fine. Uh, we could actually uh, use Weapon Surge very efficiently here. It's possible that our opponent doesn't have another land. It could also be a guild gate. Yeah, it's a guild gate, so uh, no such luck for us. Gruel Kirun at a somewhat bad moment here. Going to go with the Scorchwalker. I think 
uh, it's more likely, like, if we draw land, that's good, but we could also draw a two drop and then be able to cast the key rune in between. If we draw something worse than the key rune, we can still play it. Um, what's most interesting is how to, how to, um, approach this game and I think we need to maximize the value we can get from a weapon search in this uh, spot so we do get this Rakdos Guildgate milled and don't draw into a land so now it's time for Ghoul Key Rune and we could just attack with Scorch Walker and use it to kill the Balustrade Spy if it uh, use weapon search to kill the Balustrade Spy if it blocks and then we are going to have a blocker for Frostburn Weird uh, following that. Alternatively, we can uh, hold back the Scorch Walker to try to trade with Frostburn Weird because it's, it might attack for three. But um, the way I, th I see it is if our opponent spends mana pumping Frostburn Weird, then we are all already in a pretty good spot. Even though it trades with any of our five drops we are planning to play. Okay, we do see a block here. I would have been, I uh, would have been surprised, had uh, if that hadn't been the case. So now, hopefully, we force our opponent to be a bit more defensive, and we do get uh, some nice uh, board control that way. Yeah, we do see another attack. So it looks like our opponent is happy with what he has here. It looks like a five drop is coming our way. No, just passing the turn. So that could mean uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of things. Hustle patrol, punish the enemy. But uh, most removal spells are better off cast uh, immediately there. So it's not really clear what what's waiting for us. Um, we do a ground assault, so that gives us a way to just deal with frostman weird and leave our opponent with um, nothing basically. But we can't use ground as uh, gruel key rune. Uh, activate Gr Gr Gruel Key Rune and play Ground Assault, so that's uh, quite the disadvantage. I fully expect the Scorch Walker to die if we attack, but I think we just uh, see what happens and then try to play Rubbleback Rhino. Alternatively, we can play the Rhino first, because if it's an Essence uh, Backlash, then we want... Well, even then, I think we attack with the Scorch Walker, because Frostbite is, is, uh, has dealt 1 damage and Scorch Walker just deals 5, so... That's a, th uh, a trade I'm, I'm willing to make every time. I think we just uh, we can afford to attack here, even if he has a counter spell. In fact, I think most counter spells aren't even that bad for us. And if it's actually um, Mystic Genesis, then that's just the way it is. Uh, I think we we don't have the ma the the tools to play around Mystic Genesis, which would be an incredibly greedy card in his deck. Yeah, there it is. I, I can't really believe it, but... Uh, we haven't seen it in the draft or um, in the previous game. If we draw a land, then we can potentially ground assault the ooze. And then hold back. It's still, still a pretty awkward... Um, I, I don't know if we could or should have uh, played differently there. Pretty amazing uh, inclusion <laughs> in our opponent's deck. So now we do have blockers for both of our opponent's attackers. Um, uh, well, not anymore. And he isn't allowing us to trade Gua Kirun uh, with his uh, Fortress Cyclops, which is smart. Um, oh, I think we should have blocked here. Um, I thought we needed the Gua Kirun to block the, f um, the Fortress Cyclops, but we can punish the enemy the Fortress Cyclops, so I kind of clicked too fast there. Okay, so let's just try that again next turn. Don't think we needed to take that damage, that was uh, really unnecessary. Uh, 
let's hope that resolves, gets rid of the fortress cyclops. And then we basically have to hope also that our opponent is out of gas and doesn't have anything else. At least nothing of the quality of Karasta Gorgon or Trostani Summoner. Once again, the death touch of, of the Gorgon is, is highly relevant and if, if we see something else from our opponent now, then it's probably over. Now, this is an, another interesting attack. We don't really know what he has. If it's, if it's something great, then we probably can't win anyway. If he somehow thinks that dealing 2 damage is fine here against Zertar Swine, then we could just draw Armed Dangerous to win the game. Kind of, I think that we kind of want to gamble here that our opponent is, is um, making questionable plays. I don't think it's likely. I think that he probably has um, Trostani Summoner to follow it up. But then we are just dead anyway, so... Losing the Zerta Swine to the Gorgon or trading here is just a very easy way to lose anyway. Yep. And we draw a Zerta Druid, which isn't going to be enough. So we can just play this and say go. This didn't didn't work out at all. I don't really know how my, how my opponent's deck works um, at all, basically. But... Looks like he's uh, been successful with his greedy approach. And Mystic Genesis was uh, definitely one blowout that um, cost truly cost us here. Yeah, it's also correct to attack with all his creatures here, or at least the Gorgon and the Rhino. Otherwise, Armed Dangerous would still be an out uh, for us to draw, so uh, definitely correct to to prevent that um, possibility. Okay, Putrefy isn't going to cut it. Uh, overall, the Putrefy didn't really do all that much work given that we first picked two of them. We did pass Trastani Summoner, but I, th I, s I think that uh, the Summoner is only good in um, very specific decks, and Putrefy is just an overall very solid, very good card. Yeah, um, I think we had a great deck, and I think we can beat um, beat our opponent's deck if things go a little bit more dif differently. Uh, of course, if his mana base works out, and then his uh, high impact late game spells are able to do the most damage, even even curving out with cards like Frostburn Weird, then of course uh, things are problematic. Okay, looks like we didn't get there, but hopefully you've enjoyed this episode, and I think we've learned a little bit on the way as well. I'm Simon Gotzen, you're watching Simon Says at mtgoacademy.com, the great site that's hosting my videos, and I'll be back in two weeks. See you then!